Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to have you guys all here. I'm just kind of waiting, letting people come on in here. You guys come on in. And uh, great to have you guys here. Good to be here. God is here. We're also glad to have those of you that are worshiping with us at home. And uh, glad that you are there and uh, worshiping with us as well. Um, so anyway, we will be, uh, begin today here with a uh, song of contemplation called Build My Life. So welcome. Let's stand. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you today. First of all, we just, well, you already know this, but we want to let you know that we are sinners. We confess to you that we are sinners by our nature, by what we do, by what we say, what we even think. And Lord, we are sorry for that sin. We ask you to hear us now in a few moments of silence as we confess to you those sins that are especially troubling to us. Thank you for hearing us. For, for Jesus' sake, amen. So people of God, I ask you, do you believe that you are a sinner? Then say yes. And, do you be, and, and, and are you sorry for your sin? Then say yes. And do you believe that Jesus can forgive you for that sin? Then say yes, I believe. Then I can assure you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together here now in singing the way. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, and you are my portion. You are my hiding place, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take, I believe that you are provider, and you are protector, and you are the one that I love, and I believe you are the way, the truth. The life, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you are. And it's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, and you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to Because they can't stay long when I'm here with you And it's a new horizon, and I'm set on you And you meet me here today, with mercy is that a new Oh, all my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the I believe you are. You may be seated for our readings. Good morning. Our scriptures this morning will be from Genesis chapter 9, verse 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth, 
as many as come out of the ark. It is for beasts of, it is, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off from waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant <clears throat> as between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints and what is breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or, or think, according to the power at work with us, to him be glory to the church and to Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. Today's gospel reading is from Mark chapter 6, 45 to 56. And this will be the basis of Pastor Reiner's message today here. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to, and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. You may remain standing as we sing our, our, our next song, Good, Good Father. thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father, who you are. Who you are, who you are, and I'm loved by you. Who I am, who I am, who I am. And I see many searching for answers far and wide. I know we're all searching. 
mercy and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be to all of you. This morning we're going to talk about the gospel lesson, which was read a few minutes ago about Jesus walking on the water, Jesus walking on the waves. We're going to talk about storms this morning, because I think we'll all have storms in our lives, right? How many of you have storms in your life? Every once in a while, a shh comes along. And we're going to talk about that. First of all, though, I'm going to begin with a story. It's the story of Bob, who is always told from little on that um, his father walked on water when he was 21 years old, on his 21st birthday. His grandfather walked on water on his 21st birthday. And his great-grandfather walked on water on his 25th, 21st birthday. And so Bob thought to himself, if my daddy can do it, my granddaddy can do it, my great granddaddy can do it, I can do it. And so he goes in this boat on his 21st birthday, goes out in the middle of the, of the lake that he was on. He jumps in. He jumps in so confident that it's tw his 21st birthday, and he sinks. He doesn't drown, but he isn't comfortable either, but he's very, very angry, very frustrated, because he wanted to do what his daddy did, his granddaddy did, his great-granddaddy did. So he goes home, sees his grandmother, and says, Grandma, what happened? It's my 21st birthday, and I was out there on that, that lake, and I jumped in, and I sank, and my daddy walked on water, my granddaddy walked on water, my great-granddaddy walked why, what happened to me? Grandma looked at him and took his hands, looked at him in his eyes and said, Bobby, you were born in July. Your daddy was born in January. Your granddaddy was born in January. And your great-granddaddy was born in January. <laughs> well, Jesus didn't walk on frozen water. He walked on real water. He walked on the waves, the Bible says. The waves of the sea he walked on, which is exactly what the disciples were afraid of. But we're going to talk about storms this morning, okay? And I want to share four thoughts with you from this text in the Bible. First of all, everyone has storms. 
That's number one. Oh, by the way, the back, on the back of your bulletin, you have an outline of the message, and it, it's sometimes helpful to follow along, because there's some things I forget to say, and you may read those there, and that's, that's helpful. But everyone has, a, has storms in their lives. Godly people, ungodly people. Christian people, unchristian people. Everyone has a storm and has storms in their life. No doubt about that. Even those who do the will of God have storms in their lives. Not just those who don't do God's will. We have examples of both in the Bible. For example, we have those who went against God's will and they had storms in their life, right? Like people like, uh, like Jonah. Jonah was asked to go to where? Nineveh. Instead, he went to Tarsus, the opposite way. He was asked to go east and preach the sermon of repentance to the wicked Ninevites. But instead, he went to Bermuda. Tarsus was a, I mean, not Tarsus, but the place where he went was the Bermuda of the day. He went the opposite way. God punished him. He was swallowed by a whale. He was in a whale for three days, right? Three nights. Anyway, the Apostle Paul is an example of someone who was of God, did God's will, and yet Paul struggled with storms in his life. Think of the big storm he had, a literal storm in his life on the Mediterranean Sea when he was shipwrecked. The Apostle Paul had many other storms in his life as well. So storms come to everybody. They come to you, they come to me. We all have storms to deal with in our lives. That's number one. Number two, the text says that Jesus prays for all those who are going through storms. Let me read that for you. Let's go back to the text. That, that's in Mark chapter 6. Verse 45, 46. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. To pray. Jesus went to the mountainside to pray. He left the disciples alone by themselves, but he knew what was going to happen to them. He knew exactly what was going to happen to them in that boat. They knew, he knew exactly the fears that disciples would have. And so he prayed for them. He knew about their lack of faith. He knew about the storm. He interceded for them, like he does us. The Bible makes it very clear that the Holy Spirit intercedes for each of us as we go through the storms of life. Jesus knows better than anybody else what kind of prayers we need in our lives. He knows exactly how we, what, what we're going through, the storms that are hitting us, and so he prays. He wants to turn the storm into a blessing, and he does. So that's number two. Number three, Jesus even enters into our storm. He comes into our storms. Listen to these words. Later that night, the boat was in the middle, uh, the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking by the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they saw him and we're terrified. Jesus enters into the storm with them. He gets into the boat with them. During storms, Jesus is not aloof of our problems. He's not above our problems. He's there for us. The great preacher um, Spurgeon once said these words, when God allows you to, when God allows you to be put into the furnace, he goes with you. He goes right with you. Remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Old Testament? Three guys were thrown into a furnace, a fiery furnace, a storm. How many people wound up in the furnace? Four. 
Who is the fourth one? God, God, through the Spirit, was there. That's what God does with our storms as well. He comes in with us. The Bible in the book of Malachi says these words in the Old Testament. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. God compares, or the Bible compares God to a silversmith. A silversmith. Any of you have any information on a silversmith? Anybody ever saw a silversmith? Usually we have not. But let me share you a, uh, a thing with you that I found on the internet about the silversmith. Let me read this for you. There was a group of women in a Bible study on the book of Malachi, and they were studying chapter 3. They came across verse 3, which says, He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. This verse puzzled the women, and they wondered what this statement might mean. One of the women offered to find out the process of refining silver and get back to the group at their next Bible study. That week, this woman called up a silversmith and made an appointment to watch him at work. Here it is. The silversmith held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were the hottest as to burn away all the impurities. The silversmith had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. He not only had to sit there holding the silver, but he had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. If the silver was left a moment too long in the flames, it would be destroyed. Someone asked the silversmith, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? Here it is. He smiled at her and answered, oh, that's easy when I see my image in it. When I see my image in it. In other words, when his image is reflected off the silver, the silversmith knew that it was finished. And so also today, if you're feeling the heat of the fire, if you're caught in a storm today, know that you're being watched by the silversmith. You're being watched by Jesus himself. He is there with you in that storm. You know, Jesus will never let us go through a storm by ourselves. Never. He may be watching somewhere from, from far off or from close by either way, but he's there watching, and he will enter that storm with you when the right time comes. How does he enter our storms? He enters at the right time. At just the right time, the disciples had waited a long time for Jesus to come, I'm sure. They may, may even have wondered, where's Jesus at out there in that storm? Why isn't he here? What happened to Jesus? All the while, Jesus is watching them, seeing their fears, seeing the water in the boat, seeing the large waves hit that little boat that the disciples were in. He was watching, and at the right time, he entered. He walked to them in that boat. That's what Jesus does. So he comes at the right time, but also he comes, he comes victorious. He walked on the water. He walked on the very thing that the disciples were afraid of. He walked on the waves the exact thing that the disciples were afraid of. What's that say it tell us about Jesus? He's conqueror. He comes victorious. With Jesus next to us, nothing can harm us. Nothing can hurt us. And the disciples knew that. Now, they didn't recognize him, that's true. But they were spared. And then number four, I should also say this. He supports us in the storm. Let's go back to the text here. He supports us in the storm. 
The last couple of verses, verse 51, 52. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. He climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. They didn't recognize Jesus, at least at first. They didn't know it was him. Their fear was so great that it clouded their vision. They couldn't see him for who he was. There's a lot of things we don't understand either, right? There's a lot of things that we don't understand about our lives. Why do storms come to us? Why do I have to go through this thing again? Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's heart disease. Maybe it's a family issue. We keep asking, why, Lord, why? We don't understand. The disciples didn't understand either. It's almost as though we look through a glass dimly, like the Apostle Paul said. We, can, we can't see what's out there. It's almost like in the flathead now, we can't see the mountains. Why not? Why? The smoke. Right, we can't see the mountains. We see dimly. We hardly see the mountains. It's the same thing with our problems. We have problems. We see the problem, but we don't understand why the problem, what's, going, what's really going on. But we do see God's promises. That's where our eyes land onto, is the promises of God. Think of all the promises God made in the Bible to you and to me. The one promise that I keep hanging on to is, Rom is Romans 8.8. 8. Remember that one? Romans 8.8. 8. Let me read it for you. Romans 8.8. 8. This is a condensed version. We know that all things work together for good. Or, or is this one? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God works for the good of all. All things work out for good to those who love God. That's what it basically says. That's the promise of God. It's not important that we understand. What's important is we believe. It's not important that we, we uh, know why things happen the way they do. But what's important is that we look to the promises of God. We look to Jesus. We can trust him. We can trust his promises. We can be like Job. Remember Job? Poor Job. Did Job like the things that happened to him? Did he say, yeah, all right. My children all have died. My health has been taken. Did Job say, hey, I feel good today? No, he didn't. He mourned. He put on sackcloth, ashes. But Job kept on saying, though, to himself, I'm sure, again and again, the thing he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be what? The name of the Lord. That's faith. That's putting your trust in his promises. And that's, of course, what we're asked to do with our storms in our life. Look past the storm, look at the promises of God. He's in control. Let me share with you a, a, a test now. I'd like to have all of you take that pencil of yours. And there's a test for you in the back of the worship folder. Let's go through that test. It's called the storm test, okay? I'm gonna test your knowledge of storms. Number one, ready? Number one, gotta find it myself. Number one. Do you think there's any storm that touches your life that God doesn't know about? Yes or no? Do you think there's any storm that touches your life that God doesn't know about? Yes or no? Number two. Do you think there's any storm that touches your life that God can't handle? Do you think there's any storm that touches your life that God can't handle, yes or no? 
Number three, do you think there's any storm that touches your life that God can't turn into some good? Into some good? Yes or no? See, it's pretty obvious. As Christians, we can all mark no with a big amen, can't we? We all can. Because we know of God's promises. We know the promises of God are certain and sure, that nothing can take us away from God's love. Nothing. Not one thing can take us away from the love of God. You're secure. You're secure in every storm of life. I want to share with you in closing uh, a little bit more about Fanny Crosby. A, a number of weeks ago, I mentioned her in one of my sermons. Fanny Crosby. Uh, she wrote many, many hymns, and some of the hymns are in our, in our hymnal, and we sing them today. But let me uh, share with you uh, some things about Fanny Crosby. It's always good to find inspiration uh, in, from other people who uh, know the Lord and trust the Lord. And Fanny was one of those. The year was 1820. A six-month-old infant girl had an eye infection. The only available medical professional was called, in a, and the doctor applied a salve to the child's eyes that permanently blinded her. Shortly after that, her father died. The little girl's mother and grandmother, Eunice, raised the little girl doing their best to help this blind little girl. With a heart full of scripture at the age of eight, this little girl wrote at the age of eight, Oh, what a happy soul I am, although I cannot see. I'm resolved that in this world, world contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. She wrote that when she was eight years old. Fanny did, blind. She later remarked, it seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind all my life. And I thank him for the dispensation. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. About me. She went on to write 9,000 hymns in her lifetime. 9,000. Some we sing, of course, here at Trinity. She held no animosity to the so-called doctor. She saw her blindness as a divine opportunity to impact the world for Christ, praying often that God would use her and use her musical skills to bring others to the saving faith in Jesus. Don't blame the doctor, she once said. He's probably dead by now. But if I could meet him, I would tell him, thank you for the greatest favor in the world. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing attitude that someone can have? Only a Christian can have that kind of attitude. Because only a Christian knows that in every storm, in every storm, Jesus is there. Jesus is their blessing. What a blessing Fanny Crosby, Crosby has been throughout the ages. We sing her hymns yet today. God can bring blessings out of storms. This past week, <clears throat> Pastor Kevin had a funeral here yesterday. This past week, Ada, John, or we, uh, yeah, Ada Johnson passed away. Some of you knew Ada. She was a teacher here at our school for years. Fine Christian lady, married to Bruce uh, for many years, and Bruce passed away oh, a good 30 years ago, I guess, 25 years ago. And uh, Ada wound up in the nursing home for a good, what, 20 years? Kevin, do you think it's 20 years? 
Oh, yeah. I, I'd say it's almost 20 years where Ada was in the nursing home. A storm, a real storm that she survived. She's with glory now. She's with, with God now in heaven. But what a blessing. She encountered the storm. She knew that Jesus was in that storm. And we all know that every storm that hits us, Jesus is there, comforting us, praying for us, and allowing us to see his power over all things. Yes, Jesus is more powerful than any storm that ever will come into our lives. Let's pray about that. Father, we thank you again today for the blessings of your promises that come to us again and again and again. We live on those promises, Father. We live on those promises, Jesus. They're for us. They're for our good. Help us, Lord. Give us the faith to believe those promises day after day after day. And when a storm comes our way, help us to look to you for all good things in our life. Help us to know that in that storm, you're there praying for us, comforting us, supporting us in every way possible. Thank you, Jesus, for those words and for those promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Amen. You may be seated as we'll be bringing our offerings forward here. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to give your offering before you came, you can certainly do it um, on your way out. You can also uh, fill out the, uh, uh, the, uh, atten the, atten the attendance form here. If you're just a member, if, just a member, if, if, if you're a member, you can just put in your uh, uh, name. Uh, but then if you're a visitor with us, we, we, we'd love to get a little more information about you as well. So uh, we, we bring our offerings forward. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for loving us so very much. Thank you for Jesus, our good shepherd. Thank you for his compassion and mercy. Thank you for the peace he gives us through his sacrifice for us on the cross. We praise you for your overflowing loving kindness to sinners like us. Loving Father, we bring before you our young children. Please protect them and help them grow in their faith. For our young adults living away from home, give them guidance and direction, and keep them strong in the one true faith. Lord God, you bless us with families. Bring your forgiveness and healing to those wounded by hurtful words and deeds. Give each of us wisdom and grace to comfort, challenge, and encourage loved ones. We strive to remain faithful. Those who struggle to repent of sins, and those who agonize over how to forgive people who have betrayed their trust. Bless each marriage with love and respect for each other and with a strong commitment to each other and to you. We pray for all expectant mothers, for the unborn babies, and for those couples who would like to have children but don't. Dear God, we pray for those struggling with depression, with addiction, for those in prison. Give them hope and the strength to reach out for help. Deliver them from evil. Grant them refreshment, hope, and healing. 
and restore them to fellowship with all who love them. Lord God, give your wisdom and guidance to our church, community, and country. We don't deserve anything good, but we ask that you bless our child care center, our school, our camp, and all the many programs that point people to Jesus. We also pray especially for our counselors and staff at camp as they spend their last week at camp for, for most of them as they have as we have 75 high schoolers coming to, 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 to be administered to. We praise and thank you for that. We thank you for leading Pastor Brian Lee to accept the call to serve his congregation. Thank you for the safe travel you provided for him and his family. Please give safety to all who would travel here to our church for the four o'clock installation. Please unite us in mission and purpose to serve you together in peace and harmony according to your will. There's an entire community out there that needs you. Please work through us to share your word and with those who, who do not yet trust you as their savior from sin. We ask that you also give safe travels to our teachers who are moving here this week and next month. Help us support our church workers in whatever way we can. May our service together bring joy to them and to us. We pray for our missionaries, and Lord, there are Christians all over the world who are facing religious persecution and martyrdom. Please protect them. We pray especially for the Christians in northern Nigeria who are being persecuted. Please keep them strong in the one true faith, and if it is your will, bring an end to their suffering. Please spare us and future generations from wickedness. Give blessing to our nation and its leaders to rule according to your goodwill. May your will be done in our country. Thank you for the members of our armed forces, police, and other public servants, and please protect them. Dear God, we thank you for Pastor Reiner. We thank you for his service to this church for so many years. And we thank you for that he's been, a, been so willing to help out during the last 18 months when we had just one pastor. We appreciate him so much. Thank you for the 58 years of marriage you gave. You, you blessed him and Janelle with. Please continue to bless them as they serve you. And Lord, we come to you before you with special requests. We thank you for sparing the life of Brandon Lewis, who was in a serious car accident this past week. We also pray for others, Lord. We, we pray for um, um, Clifford Hanley, Sharon Pish's dad, who he has been placed in comfort care in Ronan. We also pray, prayed for, um, for Shirley, who fell and fractured a leg, 90 years old. And Lord, we also pray for Jason Graham, sister-in-law, um, the, uh, of, see here, the uh, sister-in-law of uh, Jerry and Vicki Week, Diane Week's grandson. He's in the hospital with organ failure and has 60% life expectancy for the next 90 days. Lord, we also pray for those who have lost loved ones. We, we pray for the, that you would give an extra measure of comfort to those family and friends of Carolyn Wright, Jimmy Curtis, and Ada Johnson. We also pray for those with other health concerns. Lord, we pray for Bonnie and Ryan and the newborn baby boy, Sam, JD, Isaac, Bruce, Carol, Sherry, and Johnny. Lord, we pray for those to be married and we name before you Claire and Matthias as they get married next week. We also pray for parents who are making decisions about their children's education next school year. We pray for those looking for jobs, or homes, or spouses. We pray for caregivers, for those with invisible illnesses, for people with financial stress. Thank you that you care about every little detail of our lives. Dear God, there's no denying that this life has troubles. Thank you for reminding us that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, their powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from your love. We don't deserve such love, but thank you, God, that you will always love us no matter what. And all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We now stand as we sing our final song, Stand in Your Love. Well, as I mentioned in the prayer, uh, we are very grateful and thankful for Pastor Daryl Reiner, and, and, and oh, he's got his whole family here, it looks like, here today here, but uh, we're uh, grateful. Um, Pastor Reiner, I consider a friend. I've known him for over 30-some oh, years, I guess, I don't know, but, uh, and, and, and a mentor. I'm just so grateful that he's been able to share with us uh, God's Word uh, at least once a month for the last year and a half. So anyway, let, let, let's, let, let's, I know he doesn't like this, but, but, let, but let's praise God for him. Also, too, I hope Brandon is okay. I mentioned you in the prayers today, but I also wanted to show you what it looked like um, before and after uh, the accident. If I if if I'm right, it was about 
you rolled about five times, is that right? And um, about 150 feet off the road. So we just praise God that he's still here. Because if you take a look at the, uh, the windows there, um, you know, fortunately he didn't have any passengers in his vehicle uh, because that side is a lot worse than where he was sitting. And so we are grateful for that. Um, we have teachers moving in, as I mentioned here. We've got one moving in on Monday, Erin Johnson at two o'clock. And so if you'd like to help her get moved in, you can contact the school about that. Um, also too, uh, um, we also need volunteers for our Hebrews Coffee Barn, okay? We've, this is during the Northwest Mon Montana Fair. And um, we've got, uh, uh, just kind of our way to witness, to, 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 to represent our church to the community. And so, um, um, so be, be sure and sign up. And Kathy mentions around here somewhere, you can go talk to her. I know she would love to talk to you. So anyway, um, let's see here. 70th anniversary is next week for camp. So if you come out to camp, you can come out there at 1115. We have a special guest preacher. We have um, Greg DeMuth, Pastor Greg DeMuth, who used to be a pastor here for several years uh, a while back. And he'll be here uh, at all three services. So if you can't make it out to camp, he'll still be here at this one here. But then after that, then we've got our... Uh, uh, anniversary, uh, church picnic, and everything here. You don't have to bring anything for the church picnic. You know, we're providing all the food here, so don't worry about that. Uh, it's all taken care of and, uh, and all that here. Um, also, too, right behind Randy over here, he's blocking my way here. No, you're fine, Randy. Uh, but there is a, uh, a, a bookcase full of books, uh, plus more that aren't even on there yet because you guys have to help make room for more books by taking them home with you or giving them to people that you think need them. These are Christian books that come from, from Carolyn Reich, um, who, no, who no longer needs them in heaven and so forth here. So they're here for, to uh, bless you uh, here on earth. And, um, and so anyway, so then finally here, I want to invite Pastor Brian Lee to come up and just say a few words. Uh, he is here today, and his installation will be this afternoon at 4 o'clock. So I hope you guys can all come back for it. It'll be great. It'll be a great festive celebration here. We'll have... All of our praise teams combined, plus some other people, plus we've got some other, we've got organ and brass and timpani and all kinds of stuff going on here. So go ahead. Good morning, church. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. Man, it's fantastic to be here with you guys. My wife, Diane, is back there with my kids, my parents. Um, we're honored to be a part of all you at Trinity are, are doing here in the Kalispell area. So uh, uh, thank you for the warm welcome, and we look forward to meeting you all. My last announcement is that if you would like confidential prayer, our Stephen ministers will be up here by the altar. Have a great day to the Lord.